Hey guys, Tyler Cedarwall here, and welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park and Planet Coaster. Sorry it's been a little bit since the most recent episode came out for this series, but this new game came out. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it or not. It's called Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it has been eating away my time. I've played it around 20 hours or so now. It's just been, it's been a great experience, and I couldn't pull myself away to record an episode until now. I was like, you know what? I should probably get back to some Planet Coaster. So here we are. So last episode, we worked a lot on this building right here, which holds the station for our newest roller coaster. But today we are going to take a small break from that and work on some other stuff, just so we don't get too worn out on building that station. But before we get to that, lots of you guys have been requesting for him to return. We have to bring back our Lord, our savior, Treesus. Yes, we couldn't forget Treezus. Back in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, he made his debut. He's coming back to us with a bang. Treezus is now going to live underneath the water in our lake, and he is going to be the happiest tree in the whole entire world. I'm glad we're bringing him back. I miss Treezus, and he will make a nice addition to our theme park. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to actually building. All right, so as I said last episode, we are going to take a break from working on that station so we don't get too tired of working on the same thing episode after episode. So the first thing we're going to do is build our very first non-coaster in this park, and I decided to build a thrill ride called the Forge. I'm not sure what these things are actually called in real life, but on Planet Coaster they're called a Forge. I'm not sure if that's the official name or not, but I guess we'll go with it. And it's such a cool looking ride, and I decided to put that ride in here first. Just because it's a very futuristic looking ride with just the gigantic robotic looking arms, I thought it would really fit into our sci-fi themed section for our park. And I just want to give you guys a quick heads up that later on in this episode I'm actually going to go back through the park and fix some stuff based on changes that you guys made in the comments section of the series so far. So we will go back through and do that and I end up making some really cool changes based on some ideas that you guys gave me. So look forward to that. But for now, let's just focus on the task at hand. Now, I accidentally deleted the ride. I was doing control undo. This game actually allows you to do control Z to undo things. And I think I was trying to undo a piece of path, but I don't think you can undo paths that you create. Paths are like one of the types of things that for some reason are beyond the undo button. I don't know exactly why, but they are. So it went in under the last thing I created that wasn't a path and it was that ride. I think like the paths are the only thing that you can undo because you can undo terrain, you can undo scenery, rides. I'm not sure why paths are just like immune to the undo button. It's so weird. Now going through and adding some nice scenery, just some nice foliage and some rocks to make this nature seem a bit more realistic. That's one thing we haven't really done too much of is realistic nature scenery. And we will be doing a lot of that next episode when we do some more decoration to the space mountain that we created for that roller coaster. Lots of rocks. I spent so much time adding rocks to that mountain just to make it seem even more realistic. I actually got kind of sick of it. Just placing rocks, it's like actually a really necessary thing to do in this game to make your nature look really realistic, but it just gets so tedious sometimes. But the payoff is worth it, so you know, you just kind of got to get through it sometimes. Got to bite the pillow. <laughs> I don't know why I used that analogy, but I just did. And also when placing trees, got to make sure to place them far enough away to where the ride won't hit it. That is a very important thing, indeed. Except, I don't think it'll even allow you to place trees to where it'll intercept with the ride. That's one thing in this game, it'll allow you to place scenery anywhere you want, except it won't let you place it where it intercepts rides. So you can't have your coaster from a track, like, go through a tree. It's kind of not allowed. Which makes sense. That will be like the one point that's just like, beyond the immersion factor. So I'm glad it allows you to do that because when building the ride, it prevents you from accidentally placing scenery in places where most people would not want scenery to be placed in their theme park. I also want to take another second and commend Planet Coaster yet again on something else that they did really well, and it is their flat rides. Their flat rides are all really beautiful, well designed, built to scale, and you can tell that they did their research when building them, and they all have just like perfect mechanics behind them. And since the game has been released, the team has actually for free been releasing new flat rides to their fans for them to use, such as bumper cars, a new scrambler type of ride. And there's been a couple others, I can't think of them off the, top, off the top of my head. But it's just really cool that they have been just adding new rides to the game just for the heck of it. It's just awesome. And they also announced, I think that towards the end of April, 
they're going to be announcing another large update to the game, and I am very excited for that. I'm just really excited to see what else they add to the game. I really just want to kind of make a video with all the ideas of things they could add to the game, because you never know. They seem to be very community driven, and if I made a video about that, they might see it and add some of my ideas to the game itself, so I might do it and just take a shot in the dark and see what happens, because there's tons of things that I would like to be able to add to my parks, and they might add them based on my suggestions, because they're just that cool of game developers. Alright, and back to these buildings I'm currently working on. So, on the path leading up to the ride, I wanted to have some buildings, some little, like, homes, and I ended up turning these into kind of, like, futuristic homes. If you lived on a futuristic planet, these are the types of homes that you would live in. So I kind of just built, like, regular, kind of modern-style homes, and then I started adding slight sci-fi elements to them. But I wanted to also add elements that seemed like they would be kind of more so built for a personal house. I also really like these lights I used as archways over these doors. I like the way that they interlapped and kind of created that cool circular elongated weird pattern in the corners. I completely did that on accident. That's one of the cool things that happens when you just play with scenery in the game. You just combine things and just find out really cool just options that you would have never come up with without screwing around and just randomly placing stuff all willy-nilly. Did I really just say that? All willy-nilly? That is something I've never said in my life until now. I'm gonna start making that a thing I say regularly. Not really. Maybe I will. Who knows? But yes, I am really digging this combination of this kind of like more organic looking roof with the shingles on it, with the more modern futuristic looking walls and lights. I think it actually looks super dope. I could totally see myself living in a house with this type of architecture. I really like it. I like the size of it too, it just seems like one of those houses that people build that's just like really really small out in the middle of nowhere in the wilderness just because they want to get away from the world. And I also like the wood that the roof gave because like some of this wood is from the roof. I think the combination of the roof, the wood and the metal also looks really cool. And then the next thing I did, I was going through the sci-fi scenery and I was looking at some of the ship parts and I found some of the ship components that actually combined really well with the house. I used these ship cockpits and put them on top of the roof to make it look like these glass skylight, maybe solar panel type things on top of the roof. I'm not sure exactly what they would be. It's kind of open to interpretation, but I really liked them. And then I used these giant ship turrets and I put them on the sides of these houses to look like chimneys. I just think it looks really cool. It's just like, I like using these components of scenery in ways they're not supposed to, to really just add a stylistic flair. Now on the inside I added some vents and some wires to kind of fill up the space. I wasn't really sure what to put on the inside so I just kind of added some more just industrial looking things just to make it seem like it had some like electricity and ventilation. I'm not really sure if I had a reasoning, I just thought it really blended well with this look so it's kind of what I went along with. And then we added some lights because you gotta make stuff look good during the nighttime. Nighttime is just as important as the daytime, even though most theme parks aren't actually open during the nighttime. But I guess during the summer, I'm gonna say the sun doesn't even set until pretty late during the summer. So I'm not really sure if lighting's that important in theme parks, but in Planet Coaster it is because our theme park is open 24 seven. Because we are just that cool. We like to spoil our guests. Plus our guests never leave. They come to our park and then stay for several months. That's like one of the funniest things about Roller Coaster Tycoon is that aspect of it is like time passes by at a really quick pace and the guests can actually stay in your park for years of in-game time and it just really it cracks me up. Also speaking of Roller Coaster Tycoon, on my iPhone I actually just got Roller Coaster Tycoon for my iPhone. I'm not sure if you guys knew about this or not but there's a mobile version of the game now, and it's the original Roller Coaster Tycoon that came out a long time ago that was made by Chris Sawyer. And it's actually Roller Coaster Tycoon plus Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 plus all of the expansions for both of those games. So it is actually an amazing, it's an amazing deal because it only costs $6 and you get so much content for it. There's like, hun all, like, I think like over a hundred levels from all of those games combined. And those games are really just a classic, and I've been playing it a lot, just casually, like say if I just go to the bathroom, or say I'm waiting in line at the drive through or something, and I'm waiting for my food, or at the bank, or I'm just, I don't know, just wanting to kill, like, 
five to ten minutes I just pull out my phone and just add like a ride to my park and then can't put it away it's really good it's like just like the original except it's touch and it's surprisingly well integrated I'm really really loving it sounds like I'm endorsed by roller coaster tycoon but I'm always like praising roller coaster building games because they're honestly my favorite type of game ever but if you guys are looking for a good iPhone game and like roller coaster building games I mean roller coaster tycoon is great six dollars on the iPhone definitely worth it now it's not to be confused with Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch, which is like the new Roller Coaster Tycoon game that they made for the iPhone. That is utter garbage. Don't buy that. I think it was originally called Roller Coaster Tycoon 4, and I think they changed the name to try to disguise it or make it look more appealing, but it's not. Don't don't mess with that game. Get the uh, let me actually like pull up my iPhone real fast and look up the name. It's Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic. That's what it's called on the iPhone. RCT Classic. Definitely worth it. A must buy. Especially if you're into tycoon games, it's just nothing like it. And there, you would get you'll get hours and hours upon gameplay out of it, and it doesn't have like any like microtransactions or anything. It's it's really fun. I've been trying to like play some of the first maps that you kind of played to death as a kid whenever you whenever the game first came out. I'm currently working on a park in Dusty Dunes. If you guys remember that, it's pretty good stuff. And as I've been yammering on about Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic, we pretty much finished decorating this ride. Now, I'm gonna need some name suggestions for this ride, so go ahead and leave some in the comments below. It's not a huge ride, but we still want to make sure it's named well, because we want to make sure we have great names for all the rides in this park. And now we're gonna start on a really big project. This is just gonna be the very beginning of it. We're not gonna continue working on it for a few more episodes after this, but I just wanted to kind of place the foundation for it just so we can know where it's going to be placed so what this is going to be it's going to be a really big project and it's going to take a lot of time to actually complete but what i want to make is kind of like a multi-leveled complex that's going to have a food court an arcade some bumper cars inside and also some like decorations like a giant fountain that has a light up display that kind of goes to some music possibly and then also a roller coaster that goes through this building as well not the full roller coaster but it's gonna run through this building and what I'm building right now is just the foundation and the kind of the path for it and then we're gonna go through and just kind of build the outside walls just to kind of mark it out so on the bottom floor for this building we're gonna have our food court and it's gonna be not huge but it's gonna have quite a few different food options and some places to sit and eat your food and then we're also going to have some bumper cars on the first floor along with an arcade so that is going to be really cool just in and of itself and then we're going to have a second floor that's going to have maybe some like bathrooms and stuff on one side but then we're also going to have the start like the line to our next roller coaster that we're that we're going to be building in our park so this is going to be a giant building that's also going to be the station entrance for our next roller coaster and so I have a lot of plans for this one singular building and we're gonna squeeze a lot into it and it's gonna be super awesome when it's done. In and of itself, it'll be like just one, it could let alone just be its own like miniature theme park. It's kind of like, kind of like Mall of America, except it's not gonna be nearly as to that scale. So as you see, I lowered the ground for this whole entire building so I could place a big concrete foundation. I'm gonna have to go through it and lower it in some other areas as well. And I'm just going to go through and place some walls to kind of mark out the size of it. Like as I said, we're not going to touch this for quite a long time because we still got to finish our other roller coaster and then finish some buildings and stuff to fill up the main strip for the entrance section of the sci-fi area. And then once we finish all that stuff, we'll come back and work pretty vigorously on this building. And I'm really excited. I have so many plans running through my mind. But now we are going to go back and fix some of the things that we kind of overlooked when first building the park because of some comments that you guys left. The very first thing we're going to do is in this very first room where we had some food. And actually this is the gift shop, wasn't it? Yes, our gift shop. I'm putting a proper ceiling because the ceiling we had in here looks really trashy and gross. I kind of like just didn't think about it for some reason when building this room. But we went ahead and put a proper ceiling and then I didn't want to just stop there so I decided to put a circular pattern with a light hanging down from the center. I also like how the wood on this circle is going in different directions so it doesn't look so uniform. I think it just kind of adds just a nice little unique touch to it. 
and it kind of prevents the roof from looking so linear and it looks really nice. And then I hung this chandelier from the center of it. I wasn't completely sure if a chandelier would match the style of this building, but I guess overall it, it pretty much does because this building is made of kind of like an old timey brick and wood and also these lamps kind of look a bit older too. So I think overall it does kind of match. And then I even added like a little concrete thing just to make it seem like this chandelier is a bit more built into this building and not just hung from the wood. And I even added like a little piece because you can actually, I'm not sure if I've even showed this off yet, but there's a bunch of shapes that you can play around with in this game and create tons of your, tons of personal creations. The people have created some awesome stuff with those shapes. And I'll have to actually kind of play around with them more in the future. I also added a few more lights to the front of this entrance just to kind of lighten it up and make it look a bit more lively and colorful. Somebody thought that would be a good idea. I might go through and add some even more colors in the future because I only added two lights actually. But just added some lights. And then also on this food sign, I changed the font because people thought it looked like it said foo instead of food. So I decided to use a font that made the D stand out a bit more. And then in this building that had some food that led to the sci-fi section, I decided to put a lower ceiling in here instead of having the ceiling be like three stories high, just because that seemed a bit more realistic. I didn't really think too much about ceilings when I was creating these buildings, but I went ahead and added them just so it would look a little bit more polished. And I want to make everything look as polished as possible and then added some lights to it as well just to lighten it up because it was a little bit dark in my own personal opinion and I'm sure you guys probably agreed with me. And then the next thing I went ahead and did is I got lots of suggestions for this is I added some pyrotechnics to the top of the ceiling for whenever the coaster passes over the Manhattan Project to make it seem like the building is actually on fire and exploding whenever the coaster go back goes back over it. And then I didn't have the fire and everything stay lit constantly because I thought that would be a bit much. So I went ahead and added the triggers so right before the coaster went above this roof everything would turn on and it would seem a bit more realistic. So it would seem like the outside of the building kind of matches the inside of the building because as you guys remember the building pretty much explodes. And setting these triggers was actually pretty annoying. I had to move around lots of these objects because I had I buried them like the fire I buried them underneath these ventilations in the roof and I had to move the roof out of the way so I could actually click on the items to add the triggers to it and I think overall this was another awesome added effect to this ride and makes it just that much better so thank you for the people who gave me that suggestion I think it definitely worked out in the long run and then after I finished fixing all that up, we had to fix one last thing and it is changing this light to be red so the lights can be symmetrical on this tower. And with that, we have fixed all of the changes that we are trying to make. And I think it's all looking pretty good. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of Planet Coaster. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. And I will see you guys in the next episode where we will continue working on our roller coaster again and try to get closer to finishing that because we need to. <laughs> Bye guys.